Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to explain about the bi CMOS inverter. Bi CMOS inverter, by the name, by seeing the name, we can understand that it is a combination of two different technologies, which is nothing but bi CMOS, uh, bipolar technology, and as well as CMOS technology. We know bipolar technology as we have studied in the second year. You might have studied in the second year of your BTEC. And CMOS technology, right now in the first uh, concepts of this VLSA, and you might have already studied in the digital integrated circuit applications. So, what do you mean by bipolar technology? So, bi CMOS technology is a combination of bi CMOS technology. is a combination of bipolar technology plus CMOS technology. Bipolar technology plus CMOS technology. So bipolar technology is nothing but your BJT transistors. And CMOS technology consisting of NMOS transistor and as well as PMOS transistors. Okay. So when you are designing the circuit with the help of both of these transistors, then that gives the mixed technology named as bipolar technology and the inverter made by this technology is known as bi CMOS inverter. Okay. What is the advantage of bipolar technology and what is the advantage of CMOS technology? Why, it, uh, why we are going to mix them? See CMOS technology has an, one advantage. CMOS technology has one advantage. Advantage of this one is very low power technology. Low power consumption. We can we can say it has a low power consumption. However, I will tell you the, what are the differences between these two technologies in the next video. Before going into that, just uh, before going into the by CMOS inverter, let me give you an introduction of these two technologies which is uh, advantage and which is disadvantage coming to the disadvantage of this one it is slow then bjt okay if you go to the advantages and disadvantages of bipolar technology nothing but your bjt advantage is speed speed of operation than CMOS technology. So when compared to CMOS technology, the transistor technology, normal BJT transistor technology is faster. And disadvantage is, disadvantage is, what is the disadvantage, disadvantage of the BJT is high power consumption. High power consumption, quite opposite. Okay. So with the advantages of the CMOS technology and with the advantages of MOS technology, we are going to combine these two technologies to give a low power consumption at high speed. Low power consumption at high speed MOS inverter. Okay. So the circuit diagram is like this. This is nothing but your bi CMOS inverter, which is a bi CMOS inverter. See the circuit diagram. See the circuit diagram. The first two, see this is the PMOS transistor and T4 is the NMOS transistor. So I will write here input condition, input condition, transistor status and output, transistor and output. So input Vn is equal to some 0 volts. Vn is equal to 0 volts. How many PMOS and, uh, and how many NMOS transistors are there? One NMOS transistor, one PMOS transistor and two BJTs are there. Two BJTs are of NPN transistors. Two BJTs are of NPN transistor. If arrow is in the outward direction, we are taking that transistor as the NPN transistor. Here T1, T2 are NPN transistor. At the load, we are having a capacitor CL. Okay. Now take a situation when input is equal to 0. What happens? This zero is applied parallelly to both T3 and as well as T4 transistors. T3 transistor 
is in on state because of zero input and a T4 transistor comes into off state. So transistor T3 on T4 off. Then what is the output? What happens to remaining two transistors? What about T1 and T2? T1, T2. What happens to the T1 and T2 transistors? See, when T3 is in on state, there is a current flow through the source and drain of this T3 transistor to the input base of this transistor T1. As B1 is having, as the T1 is having the sufficient input to flow, then the transistor comes into on state. So T1 comes into on state. And T2, it is taking the input from the T4 transistor as T4 is in off state. T2 also in off state. T2 is in off state, T1 is in on state, then what happens? There is a current flow from VDD to capacitor CL. So capacitor charges. So CL charges and output becomes VDD. This is the first case. Consider the second case where the input is a logic 1 or we can say 5 volts. So when input is at 1 or 5 volts plus 5 volts let us say plus 5 volts when input is at plus 5 volts t3 transistor comes into off state and t4 transistor comes into on state so this is about first one so t3 transistor comes into off t4 transistor comes into on state okay then what about the t1 and t2 t1 transistor comes into off state because as T3 is off state, there is no input towards the T1. So T1 is in off state and T2 is in on state. Then T2 is in on state means the current, the capacitor that has been accumulated in the previous case, now it is going to discharge. So the output becomes 0 volts. Then if you see the input and output characteristics, we can say the circuit provided circuit is acting like an inverter but there is a problem with the with this type of construction that is see here what happens when input is logic 1 when input is logic 1 or 5 volts this makes the transistor t4 on and t3 t2 also on this becomes on state and this also on state when these two transistors are in on state then there exists a static current flow from VDD through this T4 transistor and to this T2 and then ground. Okay, so that means in this situation, in this case, a static current flow, a static current flows from VDD to VSS. A static current flows from VDD to VSS. Okay, this is the drawback of this type of circuit. Now what we need to do, we need to modify the circuit to avoid this static current flow. What do you mean by static current flow? There exists a short circuit path that leads to drop in the maximum power supply because the power supply entirely goes to zero. That's why we should modify the circuit so that it should uh, avoid this case. So the modified circuit of the bi CMOS inverter is like this. So modified bi CMOS inverter. Modified bi CMOS inverter. This is to avoid to avoid static current flow static current flow from VDD to VSS. Okay. See here previously this T4 connection, T4 drain connection is at this particular uh, uh, power supply. Now it is disconnected from there and given to this emitter of this transistor T1. See properly. In the previous case, we have this connection. Suppose consider an X connection. That connection is given to VDD. Now, the same connection is taken here. Okay. So, this is 
the change that will give you the better result when you are having static current flow. Consider the same case when input is equal to logic 1 what happens this T3 transistor off state so that the T4 trans T1 transistor also in off state but when NMOS transistor like T4 is in on state so as it is in on state there is a current flow from input towards this transistor T2 so T2 also on state and the capacitor discharges. Operation is not violating but we are, we are going to eliminate the problem of static current flow. This is about bi-CMOS inverter and the modified bi-CMOS circuit. Thank you.